This entitled kid thinks he can handle any hot sauce in the world. So what happens when he arrogantly boasts he can handle this hot sauce in front of this hot sauce store? Well, they maliciously comply and let him try with hilarious results. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamp show. I used to wait tables in an upscale restaurant that was known to be the place to have your holiday or office parties. Great money if you got the right group. The menus were preset, the wine and liquor was preset, and it was all auto-graded at 18%. All of it was in the contract the host signed pre-event. Usually the host would make themselves known fairly early on, so you would know who to talk to if there was an issue, and who to give the check to at the end of the night. One night I am splitting a party of 30 to 40 with another server. This event had top tier food and mid-level wine and booze. Very nice. A small group of 5-6 to six people arrive a bit ahead of schedule. Two guys and 3-4 to four women. Not a problem. It's actually nicer if they slowly roll in so we can get drinks started. I walk over, introduce myself and the other waiter, and ask for drinks. Now this was back in the early 2000s and chads weren't a thing yet. But the two guys were the chattiest chads. If they could have popped their collars in their suits, I'm sure these guys would have found a way. Super Chad won. Me and my bro are going to start with a round of Johnny Walker Blue. And these ladies are going to have expensive red wine. Super Chad 2, turning to the girls. Once you have Johnny Blue, you can just drink anything else. It changes you, bro. If you like, I can put those on a separate tab. The event contract has Johnny Walker Black, but not Blue. And the red wine selection for tonight is some less expensive wine. This is our party. Just get me what I ordered and don't question me again. Who do you think you are? You're just some waiter. We have MBAs. Just get us our drinks. I walk over to the other waiter and tell him we are in for a heck of a night, but the check should be nice. For those that don't know, Johnny Walker Blue is three to four times the cost of Johnny Black. So one round of drinks for these people is over $100. The whole night goes exactly as we thought. Nothing was good enough. The appetizers were crap. The food was horrible. Not enough bread. Too many bread plates. Drinks were taking too long. Why do some people have food and others don't? It's 40 people, man. It takes a minute to get that much food out. To make it worse, Chads and co are all over the place, moving seats and making others move so they can talk to who they want. This makes serving horrible because we did everything by seat number. Surprisingly, most of the table was normal, not entitled people, and who knew the waiters are people too. They were impressed by the food and graciously ordered the drinks that were in the contract. One older gentleman at the other end of the table from the Chads apologized for their behavior, saying they might have fancy degrees and good jobs, but you can't teach class. Love that guy. Finally they are winding down, and after drinking almost a full bottle of Johnny Blue, along with all the other food and drinks, they have a very hefty check, and the other waiter and I are excited to get paid. We start picking up the dessert plates and asking for last drink requests. The nice older guy at the end of the table says to bring him the check. Not wanting any more interaction with the chads than necessary, I bring it to him. I tell him I can take care of it whenever and go about clearing the table. A few minutes later he calls me over. Maybe there was a mistake in ringing up the drinks? There's almost $600 for Johnny Blue. When the contract I signed only included Johnny Black and there are some single glasses of wine that are different from what we agreed upon. No mistake sir, that is what was ordered and drank. He is being awesome and I feel bad. Why did you give the drinks to them when we clearly had a contract? I apologize sir, they told me that this was their party and since I was just a waiter to shut up and do what I was told. So I did, I'm sorry. I took them at their word. I point them out and he calls them over. What follows was the singularly greatest butt chewing I have ever been witness to. He goes on about how he was doing something nice, but apparently that wasn't enough. About how horrible their behavior was that night and how he is ashamed for them. But my favorite line was how you see a person's true colors in how they treat people that work for them and they had shown theirs. Then he calls me back over. Apparently I thought this was my party. Guess I was wrong. This is their party and they will be taking care of the check. Oh, and up the gratuity to 25%. You earned it. He turns around and walks off, leaving the chads with the check. All in all, it was about 3k. I have never seen two grown men look so defeated. Johnny Blue man, it changes you bro. I don't know if these guys think they're really sophisticated, simply because they have a tertiary education. Obviously they thought they could take advantage of the fact that they weren't going to have to pay the bill. So it's nice to see people who behave like that, especially when they mistreat waiters, just because they think they're better than them, get it all shoved right back into their face. And probably where it actually hurts the most, their wallet. 
I work in a hot sauce store in a busy outlet mall. We're a well-liked, locally owned business and have many loyal returning customers. But at this particular location, we also get a lot of tourists who are curious about our challenge items, or Hot Ones products. We have a large variety of samples available every day, literally like 100 hot sauces, 50 plus barbecue wing sauces just out on the table, and we can pull another 50 plus bottles or so from the fridge if one's open. Every so often, we get people who come into the store and ask to try the hottest sauce. They love jalapenos in their burritos and have eaten habaneros straight, and they're ready to enter the ring, swallow some sauce, and gain the admiration of a couple friends and bystanders at the cost of a stomach ache. We usually try to guide them to the 10th hottest sauce in the store, burn them with it, and move on to something mild or medium suited to their taste. Today, while I was selling items to people who were actually paying for things, a 10 or so year old boy enters the store. I always get wary when children enter the store alone because it is full of glass bottles. They usually dart straight for the shelves and pick something up, but this child came barreling towards me like a bullet. While I make change for the couple buying some sauces, he calls out to me. Excuse me, in horrendous whiny pitch. I ignore the rude interruption and continue my conversation with my customers. He parrots it again 12 times or so back to back as I thank these people and get them out of the store. Finally, I turn to him. How can I help you? Where the heck is this kid's parents? Hi, can I try the hottest sauce in the store? Not this crap again. I am not dealing with this. Not with a 10 year old kid. I explained to him that the hottest sauce on the table is Hellboy, right hand of doom. It's spiked with a 6.66 million Scoville extract. And honestly, if you're not experienced with this kind of stuff, more than just a tiny bit can really mess up a good part of your day. Take my word for it. I explained to him that he has to be 19 years old to try it and sign a waiver, which is bullcrap, but I'm off in 30 minutes, so screw this kid. And instead guide him to a tasty fermented habanero that he coughed his eyes out on before explaining to me that he could handle the right hand of doom because his dad eats spicy peppers with him all the time. Okay, I say. He leaves, thank goodness. 15 minutes later I'm interrupted by another customer, this time a gigantic woman in a blue blouse. She's set next to my sample table like a giant blueberry blocking up 20% of my floor space. Excuse me! Apple doesn't fall far. The customers I'm with are polite and excuse me to speak to her. You didn't let my son try the sauce! I explained to her that it has extract in it several times hotter than anything he has ever eaten and that it can cause him severe discomfort, and that I will not let him try it in my store. I explain that she is free to purchase the sauce and have him try it at home if she so wishes. She explains to me that she married a Mexican man, and that I wouldn't believe the things we ate in New Mexico City, where he grew up. When I asked what they had eaten there, she told me, things hotter than anything we have in the store. At this point, her daughter interrupts our conversation. I kid you not. Excuse me. What? I'm getting annoyed. I was annoyed from the second I saw the kid, and now he's back 20 minutes later with three of them. Why do you sell Valentina? It's not even a hot sauce. Aren't you from Mexico? It says freaking salsa picante on the gosh darn bottle. It's 5.50, I'm off at 6. I've had enough. How about this? You can try the sauce, and if it's as mild as you think, I'll let him try it. She agreed and grabbed her sample stick. I reached for the right hand of doom and unscrewed the cap. It's nuclear aroma sending memories of aches to my stomach. And as she goes to dip the stick into the sauce, I warn her to only take a small amount. She grins at me and sticks the stick all the way into the sauce. I just activated my trap card. She slaps it into her mouth. Immediately, she looks uneasy before she throws herself into pure agony. She is coughing, swinging her head back and forth, trying desperately to speak, but she cannot muster any words. She dropped her sample stick in all the chaos after a solid few minutes of coughing and dry heaving. She manages a single word. Water. I explain to her that water won't help her now. My relief walks through the door just in time to witness the finish. She tells me that the only reason she is coughing is because it went down the wrong pipe. She then immediately vomits into our garbage can. She apologizes for spitting up like she didn't just rocket launch half a liter of chum into my trash can and then leave without saying anything else. I tossed out the trash with a smile on my face. 
this and clocked out. It'd probably be pretty tempting working at the store to just be like, you wanna try it? Sure, go right ahead, as your like immediate response without any warning because they're arrogant enough, right? Let them learn the hard way. So the hero of our story was pretty reasonable to continually warn them and say, listen, you're probably not going to be able to handle this. But the more he warned them, the more arrogant they got. Even at the end there, they still couldn't admit that they were wrong. They still had to suffer the consequences though. About 20 years ago, I was dating the man I would later marry. He had an apartment that was a quad, but wasn't surrounded by the best neighbors. It was sold, but he was kept on as a tenant by the new landlord. He wasn't a bad landlord per se, but he fancied himself a handyman, and he was cheap. So the washer and dryer, included in the rental, both break, and the landlord comes in to fix my boyfriend's setup. It works, but only temporarily, and they keep breaking over and over again. It goes on for months. Boyfriend, who is our model tenant, finally complains lightly, saying that he's been going over to his mum's to do laundry, but sometimes he has to do it late, so he's been having to spend money at the laundromat. The landlord says that my boyfriend can bill him for the laundry, and the landlord will reimburse if things break down again, and to make sure it's all documented by time, date, and amount. Then the landlord says he's going to take a look at it right now, confident, somehow, in the skills that he hasn't shown. They broke again. I'm far less tolerant about these things, but my significant other doesn't like to be any trouble to anyone. Still, he's really tired of not being able to do his laundry at home, but thought it was really good of the landlord to offer to pay for his quarters at the laundromat. Bless his heart and cue malicious compliance. This problem has gone on for six months and I'm going to be solving it. I tell my boyfriend that he'll then have to keep track of the quarters he spends by date, time, and amount. And since there is no receipt, they might have to fight it out over the amount. And just know he hates conflict. Plus there's the time and gas he spends, which while he could bill for it, any lawyer would argue that he'd have to spend time waiting his laundry anyway at home. I tell him to send his laundry out for service because the service provides receipts. But won't that be expensive? He asks. I grin inwardly and say, it might be, but it's the only way to provide adequate documentation he's asking for. You can't prove what you spend at a laundromat, but you can with a laundry service. You'll include a copy of the bills with your rent, and a note saying how you've subtracted the amount that it costs you to do your laundry this month. As a washer and dryer has been included in the rental agreement and hasn't been working consistently properly for six months. Since there isn't documentation for the last six months of course, we won't be retroactively billing him. Don't worry sweetheart, I'll write the note. And I'll be sure to thank him for providing this in lieu of getting it fixed. It really is nice of him. Okay, he says, that sounds good, but how do you even arrange for that? I know dry cleaning, but this is just laundry. I'll take care of the details, no problem, I reply. They charged by the pound and load, so I made sure to also include all the stuff he had put off washing, since it wasn't a top priority. He'd only been doing the essentials for fear one of the other would break mid-cycle, and because he felt he was taking advantage of his mother. And boy howdy, it really was expensive having a laundry service do all his laundry. I arranged for regular pickup and drop off that was convenient for my significant other. They even folded his underwear. The rent check he handed over was substantially lighter by more than $200, but all receipt copies did have the time, date, and amount. Faced with the prospect of such a bill each month, the landlord scheduled an actual repairman to fix the machines one day after rent was handed over. If it's his job to replace it, the reality is he should pay one way or another. It's only until you create the incentive that the laundry service is the much more expensive way to go that he actually decided, hmm, I guess I probably should actually do something. So I've worked in retail for about seven years now. This is from a few years. The background. I was working as a supervisor in customer service at a large chain supermarket. Where I live, there's a thing called scanning policy. This is when an item scans at a higher price than it is ticketed for. If this happens, you get it for free. Now with this policy, if you have multiple of the item, you get the first one free and the rest at the correct price. Remember this. I was the supervisor on duty for a closed shift the only person above me in the store at the time was the duty manager who works in groceries. She has never worked in customer service. I had a customer come up to me and right off the bat, she was rude. She slams her receipt down on the table and informs me that I, yes me specifically, had overcharged her for an item that was on special. She had bought 10 of them for the specific reason that they were on special. I apologized to her and went to get the ticket. This lets us confirm that one, it did scan wrong, two, 
two, that it wasn't a human error. Example, a wrong ticket or wrong item. And three, so that the price can be fixed in the system before it is put back up, so we aren't constantly giving away free things. I came back up to the counter and apologized again, said she was correct and just to make things go smoothly, I offered to give her five of the items for free and the rest at the special price. This is where she flipped. She demanded all of them for free as they were all scanned wrong. I explained to her what the scanning policy was and that I was actually giving her more for free than I should have been. She proceeded to tell me that I was completely wrong and that she was a lawyer and that she was going to get all the items for free as that is what the law stated. I calmly explained to her again that that isn't the law for a scanning policy. This is when she demanded a manager. I informed her I essentially was the manager of service at that moment, but I would be happy to get my duty manager, so I went off. I explained everything quickly to the duty manager, and she wasn't really sure, as she had never had to deal with a scanning policy before. I informed her that we had government issue pamphlets on it in the office, if she wouldn't mind popping up to get one for me, so I could show the customer. I went back to the customer to inform her what my duty manager was getting. The biggest grin slipped onto her face, and she just said, good. My duty manager comes back and hands me the scanning policy form. She then turns to the customer, and before she even has a chance to complain, my duty manager informs her that she is leaving the customer with me, as I was currently in charge of service, and left. The lady still had a satisfied smile on her face, so I calmly placed the pamphlet on the table, flipped to the multiple items section of the scanning policy, and pointed to it. I couldn't contain my smile as I watched hers disappear, the more she read. Once she was finished, she just looked at me and didn't say anything. I then continued to process her items, giving her the first item for free and the rest for the special price. I turned to her and explained that as per the policy, she has gotten the first item for free and the rest at the special price, and informed her I would refund her a total of 2x dollars rather than 3x dollars I was originally offering her. She didn't say a word and just took the money and left. Sometimes when people are given an inch, they try and take a mile. But you know what? If you push too hard, any bit of generosity you were shown might be all taken away. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.